But I will say this, though. I, I fear for you because I fear for you because <laughs> okay. uh, having to watch some of this ACC basketball officiating drama and it spill mm. over into how you do a broadcast and the stuff like that, that's right. going to make you feel like you're in your 80s at this point. It's going to age you quick, Wes. <sighs> You know, here's the thing. I um I have uh I have come to a point where yeah, I know it's part of the game. And this is the thing. Remember when we had this conversation a couple of years ago? I think Gilio had just kind of gotten ramped up. It was his first basketball full time. You mm-hmm. know, we were pandemic basketball, remember? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. And I remember we had the conversation about technology and basketball. And technology and basketball may not be the marriage we had hoped it to be at no. times. No, no. You, you can say that. I mean? I mean, you, you guys know what I mean sports. by that, right? Yeah. I know, but you, this sport in particular, at this level in particular, has mm-hmm. gotten to where now all of a sudden we see a play happen, and then the next thing you know, we're cracking the Zapruder film out type thing. Right, right. And it's and the guys that do this, and I've heard, is it um, Steve, um, correct me here, the guy who is the official that appears with you guys sometimes. Oh, Steve Schwartz. Thank He's you. the high school basketball official, yeah. Right, and he's talked about how it's affecting the growth of that particular discipline, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I think that you know when you have weeks like this in the ACC, one of the highest levels of college basketball, this is why it's hard for people to say, yeah, I want to go do that. Yeah, and I think that's the that's the thing that I really wanted to focus on. Um, officiating is a tough job. And oh. we, all, we all recognize this. No question. But I do think that these things do kind of build momentum. If one bad call leads to another crew wondering, all right, well, how do we do this? Coaches are obviously looking out for these kinds of things. Fans yes. are obsessing over free throw rates and everything else. So it starts Saturday, okay, fine, it's the heat of the moment, whatever. That's backed up by Monday's incident with Kyle Filipowski where they don't call anything, even though I think they should have called it on the floor in that instance because of the contact. I do think you should have some control of your body, and that contact, you kind of have to call it. You go to the replay booth, and you understand it's incidental, and you don't elevate it beyond what it actually was, fine. And then last night, which... I'm if they would have called that final play with RJ Davis one way or the other I would have been I would have been okay with it but the fact that they elevated it because they went back to the replay uh monitor to oh well there was this elbow and everything else now we're it's bogging down the game and it's causing fans and coaches to go nuts sure and it's and and Gilio knows this because he's been the principal writer covering two of the three institutions in the marketplace there, mm-hmm. right? You know how thin the ice can get when stuff like this starts. And when you have an ACC race, like I think we're going to have down through halfway of February and the rest of March, when you have an ACC race where it, every every game is going to count, mm-hmm. that's kind of where I think I've come to a conclusion on this. One way or another, every game's going to count. It, it doubles down on everything. And – Joe, Gilio, here's the deal. I I understand where these coaches are. I also understand where the officials are because I know how difficult this is. And it's driving fans crazy because the one thing they want, they're not getting, and that is consistency. And that's where the the issues develop. I was going to say that's the desire, but I don't know how you get consistency in the current system where your your officials aren't employees, your officials are going and working too many other games – your officials don't work together as crews. You know, I mean, mm-hmm. that's an idea from football that, that has some merit that they don't even really explore because they have too many other moving parts that go with it. But it just seems right. like we want something that we don't want to put the effort into actually solving. Mm-hmm. Every year, and, and you know, you and I know Brian Kersey. We know Brian Kersey. We know Paul Brazzo. It's not like they're up... That's where you know there's a disconnect between the people who interact with us on Twitter. Sure, it becomes well they're fixing games or you know everything's happening for Carolina and it's like, guys, it's not even possible. I mean, I'm not, I'm not saying the Tim Donahue thing can't happen in, at the college right. level. I'm not I'm not suggesting that, but the idea that there was some even if you look at the Tim Donahue thing mm. and you look at what actually happened, mm-hmm. I I do get a little nervous when I hear tendencies mentioned because. Yeah. Donahue actually gambled on what he called tendencies. Mm-hmm. 
for players and for officials and for mm-hmm. points of emphasis, I do think the league would be better served to make the officials their employees. I do think the league would be better served to be more transparent with some of these reports. Because, Wes, I was saying before, they probably get 90% of the calls right. That might even be low. That might even be low. Like, it might be 95% that actually get right. And then we get caught up in the 5% that's wrong. And I'm not saying those 5% aren't wrong, but I don't know how humans are supposed to make those calls. Because take last night. Roger right. Ayers is one of the three best officials in the ACC. He's one of the three best officials in the in, country. In basketball. In the country, yeah. In, in basketball. In real time, and in real time, he called that a charge on Mintz. I thought that yeah. was the right call. I did, too. I, I didn't think there needed to be extra. I just thought, hey, it's a charge. Carolina's ball or, or two free throws yeah. for Carolina. You're right. But and, then all and, of a sudden, we got to slow it down to the milliseconds, and it becomes something else. Yeah, and Hubert, and by see, the way, Hubert Davis is calling for He's doing like, hey. To the As monitor. he should have, because monitor, his player right? was hitting because the face. Sure. Yeah. His player. I don't yeah. blame him. It's, yeah. it's his player. And and here's the thing. Then we go back into the – and again, as much as Dan and I – and I'm using Dan's example because, the number tall one, I'm, I'm blessed to work with the tall Virginian. I'm also blessed that Dan is about as good as any analyst doing college basketball when it relates to the rules and the degree of the rule. Mm-hmm. Okay? And – you know, it's like we were talking yesterday prior to Clemson, Georgia Tech last night. We can discuss flagrant one, flagrant two all we want, but we're not even 100% guaranteed to get what we think we see. Yeah, You do get to the subjectivity of this. And I think Brian and his leadership with the ACC in particular, and that's what we're focused on here, right? Brian has the and, – and Luke wrote about the – translation or the transition piece of where we are in officiating. Luke right? DeCock, the columnist Luke DeCock, News Observer. Observer. Yeah, he wrote about the transition piece in officiating, and he's exactly right in terms of we've got Hall of Fame guys who have done this league, and we've still got, in my opinion, the highest level of college basketball officiating is still in this league on a night-in, night-out basis. I would tell you, if you watch college basketball – hang out late tomorrow night and watch the West Coast Conference or watch the Pac-12. And I'm telling you, just in the population base, we get the core best officiating in college basketball. And the relationship between the leagues, and Jillio, you know what I'm talking about, the alliance that went on between the SEC and the ACC and Curtis Shaw and the Big 12 and the way uh, John Cal has run the Big East and the way the Big Ten, we get the best core group you can get in the country nearly night in, night out, while also growing the product line. That has nothing to do with what's transpired in the last five days, though, Joe. It's now about the incidents on the floor and the collective nature of those incidences and the fan bases that it's impacted, I think. I have a suggestion. I mean, if people want more consistent officiating, they want these crews to work together, they only want ACC officials to work ACC games, I have a suggestion. You got all this NIL money flowing around. Why don't oh, we, boy, why, we let's, let's create a let's, let's create a ref collective? Jillio, you got the abstract sports guy with you again today, don't you? Well, let's, you don't want to do you don't want to do. Come on, ref collective. Everybody you put an maybe, ad on. You want to put an ad on the sleeve too, well, like maybe, the umpires right, for FTX, why not? Why a belly not? up crypto company. Why, let's do that. Why not? Right, right? Slap some yeah. yeah, slap some logos on them. Hey, look, Bojangles is a corporate champion. All right, how about you why champion you, some calls? You, champion call. some right calls, Bo. <laughs> And then just put it right there, little boat jangles right there. Chilio, just reach over there. What? Just go ahead. I think it's a fantastic I, idea. Every collective you want to, oh, you, you have to register a collective with the ACC, oh. and you take like five percent off the top, and you go, uh, it go works to officials. Let me 